What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So we finally finished all of our barbarian stuff, and we finally finished the build. And the build guide is already out, but a lot of people in my community were asking about the the guide and how I can one shot Uber Lilith, which we made in a whole nother video, which you guys can check out and just easily farming Nightmare Dungeon one hundreds, etc. This build absolutely slaps. Um, and I got to give credit where credit's due, man. These build guides that my community are sharing with us and we're just really building ideas from these and changing things, it really makes the realm of theory crafting in Diablo 4 just even more fun. But what I bring to you today, guys, is Hoda. I know you guys have seen this probably from a lot of other creators, um, and but I had to bring it to you because I'm having so much fun. I still don't even have a perfect hammer here but this one will do for now so i'm just gonna go over everything you need for the build guys the skills gear uh vampiric powers and the quick paragon board and yeah let's just jump into this and talk about how strong this build actually is and why we're able to do so much damage and this is baby damage in comparison to what you guys can do um on the higher end you guys have already seen it i think rob did like 247 kajillion damage or quatillion damage or whatever it is but yeah so let's go over uh the build guys and everything that you guys are going to need so we're taking lunging strike because this is also going to be a strong berserking build so every time we crit with lunging strike we berserk um this is also going to be a generator if you're having any issues with fury generation but at this point in the game you shouldn't <clears throat> next we got hammer of the ancients the main uh, skill of the build and then we have ferocious we deal one percent additional damage for each point of fury we had when we used it our max fury is 213 super strong which is a big reason why we're able to do so much damage next we are scrolling down we don't have anything else there we're taking three points into imposing presence for more life and martial vigor for damage reduction against elites uh, by 12 percent if you feel like you don't actually need the extra life and damage reduction here you could probably take it into something else but however i want a lot of survivability with this build since everything is just cashing in on my fury being high and sometimes you have to run around to keep the the fury pretty high of course we got rallying cry into tactical rallying cry which is going to give us some more fury and uh, resource regeneration we're doing challenging shout into tactical for even more fury every time we hit um, or for each person, or every time that we take damage. And then we have War Cry, which is going to give us some increased damage for every nearby monster. Or Bellowing a Mighty War Cry increases your damage dealt for um, 7 seconds. And then we Berserk for 4 seconds. This is huge. And then also, if there's 6 enemies nearby when we cast War Cry, uh, we deal even more damage. This is only 5, unfortunately. But essentially, like you would cast this, and it would give you a huge boost here. <clears throat> which is really really strong especially in large mobs okay next uh that's it for our defensive stuff let's scroll down of course we're doing power war cry we're maxing out booming voice so they last longer <clears throat> we're taking raid leader so that way we uh our shouts heal allies um we could actually probably take raid leader down if you don't really need this you could probably drop this down and do something like just increase speed um, something like that gutter all for that way it causes uh, enemies to deal four less damage if anything you could probably just swap these and do one and do two into this one so this one's maxed for less damage especially at the higher levels <clears throat> next we got aggressive resistance for more damage reduction while we're berserking we should always be berserking and then prolific fury while berserking our fury generation is up by 18 percent this is another reason why our, our resource just our fury just stays full and then we got a uh, pit fighter for more damage obviously we're always up close and personal one point into thick skin for just a little bit of fortify but we just get to a counter offensive while we have fortify for over 50 percent of your max life you deal 12 percent multiplicative damage we should always have our max fortified shield we'll get to that in just a second then of course down to our ultimates we're taking three into temper fury for more fury and wallop as well as brute force because this is an overpower build so doing overpower damage and even more damage with bludgeoning because we are using hammers is super strong then our key passive is unbridled rage for even more damage but it costs 100 percent more fury our hammer of the ancients costs 63. if we took this off our hammer of the ancients costs 31. so it's we deal a 135 percent multiplicative damage but it costs a lot more so just be wary of that and then, of course, Wrath of the Berserker, which gives us Berserking and Unstoppable, but more movement speed and Fury Generation. 
Okay, so as we pop all these, it's pretty simple. You're just moving around, dashing, and then we're just hitting for an insane amount of damage. Right? Like, we just hit for 90 million there. 100 million. So it's very, very easy to just smash mouth in this build. Our expertise of choice is going to be two-handed axe. This is the best one. Increased damage to vulnerable enemies. Super easy choice there. Now let's get into our gear pieces, guys. This is where things are going to get a little bit interesting. I'm going to give you some uh, options to the build. So if you have Shaco, go with Shaco. You could also use um, the new crown helmet, which is like the Shaco replacement. However, I've opted for Relentless Berserker. Um, I don't even think I have a helmet on there, do I? Yeah, you could always opt for um, God Slayers if you really wanted to in your helmet slot. And then you could always really try. I've tried this one too. The, uh, what is it? Gor Gorgowitz of the Mighty. When you are, when you gain Berserking, while already Berserk, you have a chance to become more enraged, granting increased damage to Fury per second and 10% cooldown reduction. This is also a very, very strong <clears throat> choice here in the helmet slot. Either one of these are super good. I would use any of them. <clears throat> Next, we got Disobedience. The only reason it's in the chest piece and not my amulet is because we're using Banished Lord's Talisman for just a guaranteed overpower and dealing increased overpower damage. In our gloves, we got Ancestral Force, obviously, to Quake Out. Of course, the bolts will. Every time we dash, we do increase damage. Do I actually have a max one? I need to swap this for the max one. Go ahead and swap that now. Uh, for the max damage, 10% more for 40 over 30 is pretty huge. Uh, then we got Ghost Walkers when we do become unstoppable, which we get from doing our evade or dash. We gain increased move speed. I'm waiting to put the max on here, actually, but this is one is very, very good. Um, I think my resistances are pretty close to being maxed here. Uh, then we have Edge Masters. So we deal 40% increased multiplicative damage for every amount of resource that we have when we cast. So again, once our resource is full, this is where we max out on Edge Masters because then we're able to just do as much damage as possible with that. We got Accelerating here, so that way we can smash faster between crit strikes because it's very easy to crit in this build. We also have a huge lucky hit chance on this build for 50%. Then we got Earth Strikers here. After swapping eight times, our next overpower skill will overpower, dealing increased damage. Switching weapons is literally just attacking with this, overpowering, switching, overpowering until we get it. However, you could really, shout out to my community here, because you could really just swap this out. You don't necessarily need it. Um, you could just do Inner Calm. Uh, you get it for each second you stand still. And you can see it tick up very quickly. So like when you move, like it just, it starts to tick up. I mean, that is a lot of damage. It just, I would only swap this in for bosses, really, um, is what I would tell you to do. And then on our sword, we got Limitless Rage. This is huge. Each point of fury we generate while at max increases our next core skill. So while we're at uh, full fury, let's say, right? And then we, we pop this for 20 more. Now we're going to deal even more damage. Then in our rings, we got Echoing Fury for while our shots constantly generate three fury per second. If you get a four stack, this is the best one. Then of course, Battling Banish Lords, and then the brand new red ring, the one and only ring. So after spending 100 fury within three seconds, our Hammer of the Ancients is gonna be a guaranteed crit and do increased damage. So how do you know this? So we gotta spend 100, so Hammer of the Ancients is 63. So all we're gonna do is cast it once, cast it twice, and you're gonna see this come up. When you see this little icon, that means your next attack is a guaranteed crit of Hammer of the Ancients, and then you're good to go because it's your next one. So super, super strong, super easy, very easy to tell. I know a lot when you're like fighting, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes, but that's how you get a huge burst in damage. So that is the gear, guys. Let's go over the vampiric powers. So we have some options here and just things I've kind of played around with. So the one that you have to have is Blood Boil obviously um every 20 seconds we get a guarantee overpower this just really helps to build super easy choice prey on the week again paired with metamorphose when we dash we make them vulnerable or we inflict the vampire curse and then prey on the week makes them vulnerable and we deal more damage to vulnerable enemies super easy the next two are kind of not toss-ups but you do need sanguine brace here when you kill an enemy you fortify we need to have as much fortify as possible which helps trigger our overpower and then next, of course, we have Resilience for damage reduction. However, you could definitely swap this out and do Undying, which pairs well with Sandrine Brace. Just gives you 
ultimate life uh in reality but yeah you could do that you could swap to um accelerating if you really wanted to try that or if you feel like you're not making enemies vulnerable enough you could do uh where is it a curse touch you could do ravenous for attack speed but i think these and you kind of swap out for um what is it resilience if you really want but i think these two paired together are very very strong so now let's go into the paragon board you guys know how we do uh do these the paragon board is just going to be very very quick and i'm just going to go over all the nodes that i have so all we're looking for here in the glyph is just as much damage and damage reduction as possible and shout cooldown so we got marshall obviously after casting a shout the active cooldown to every other shout skill is reduced this is huge then we got crusher we're using nothing but maces even in the normal two hands so we will always have increased uh, mace damage and then while we're wielding a mace we deal 30 percent multiplicative increased overpower damage the full paragon board guys will all be down in the description below in the build link we then we got dominate again after not overpowering for 30 seconds we get a guaranteed overpower you see the theme here we have a lot of guaranteed overpowers super strong uh, then we got Irie, which again, while berserking, we take 10% reduced damage and we do increase damage while we're berserking, super strong. And then we got Wrath for even more crit strike damage. And then skills that crit strike, that critically strike, generate us more fury. So it just allows us to stay full and just spam. Now you have a lot of options here, guys. You could definitely do Territorial. Um, that is super strong because you're doing up close damage. Um, where's the other one? You could do Disembowel. This is super strong. Um, exploits even good and imbider is also super strong in this build so you can you have a lot of options here if you didn't want to go with all those um but yeah that is hoda guys i know you guys have seen it and it's been crazy um we've literally just one shot uber lilith you one shot everything it's super strong speeds through nightmare dungeon 100s um i might test this against zir in a, in a couple weeks but we're doing sort for that make sure to check out the videos on that but yeah, guys, let me know what you think down in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe, and as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.